You are listening to the power of inspiration and awakening radio with Julia Griffin to master a higher frequency for new state of mind. Once you walked in a forest of splendor in which everything you did and everything you thought was aligned, it is possible at this time to begin to return to the old knowledge. Intuitive healer and manifester Julia Griffin is here to talk about this unique time in history when all sentient beings, animals, plants, trees, and the earth are intent on creating this change. The wolves awakened her to the most incredible light, which opened gifts and brought knowledge that she longs to share. You are creators, and you are born to be creators of beauty, possibility, and joy. Join Julia on a journey into a beautiful and magical world where amazing possibilities exist. Let us help open the door. The power of inspiration and awakening with Julia Griffin starts right now. Hello, everyone. I'm Julia Griffin, and you're listening to The Power of Inspiration and Awakening on Transformation Talk Radio. Stay with us for the next hour, and let us help you experience a higher vibration and a new state of mind. So welcome to the show. I want to tell you what today's show is about. This week's episode focuses on learning how to align with the amazing field of energy that surrounds the earth. It is a universal energy and responds to us. So what do I mean about this field responding to us? Well, everyone has had at least one wonderful day where life carried you and there was this joy and this feeling of being alive and your body felt great and you felt very optimistic and hopeful about life. Another example of this is um, when you're thinking that you want something and you'd really, really like to do it. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere comes the opportunity to do it. That's called the quantum field. It is a place of love and light. It is also the place that we interact with when we're creating non-ordinary reality. What is non-ordinary reality? Well, I just listed two things. But have you ever had a feeling that you had too much to do, but then time slowed down and you couldn't believe how much you did? Or you felt tired and you got your energy back? Or you talked to a friend or a teacher and you suddenly felt hopeful about your life? The field is something that is composed of energy, higher energy. And when we receive it, or when we connect to the field, which we all do with meditation, these incredible changes take place. So we're going to talk about learning how to do that, and not only are we just going to talk about it, we're going to have exercises for that, and we're going to talk about crossing the bridge of awakening. This is the journey of this time, how we move from a lower state of consciousness to a higher one, and learn how to create from that place. All the things that I'm going to share are things that you can do, so let's get started and raise our consciousness together. So I like to begin with what time is it? We have a new moon coming on Friday. The new moon is the void. It's a time of contemplation. When we begin to think about what we want to do, everything comes to a standstill and we make plans. Astrologically, we have sun, which is life, moon, which is emotions, and mercury, which is communication, all in Aquarius. That's an air sign. It's very mental. Aquarius is ruled by Uranus, which does control the quantum field. So it's a timely talk. We have Saturn and Pluto conjunct. It's a fairly rare aspect. They're in Capricorn, which is Earth. And that's about a leap in consciousness. How we're going to change ourselves and align to create conscious change on the physical plane, not just within ourselves, which I think all of you are probably pretty adept in doing, or you wouldn't be listening to me, but how are we going to come together and do it on the planet? All of the planets are direct through February. That means they're moving forward, and that gives us a chance to act on our dreams. So if you've been waiting to take a step, the time is now. So let's go back to the quantum field. It's the place that we access when we go to a healer and we heal. 
we talk to someone, we feel better about life. When we see someone we love, and it uplifts us. The field is a loving, caring form of energy that surrounds us. It wants us to heal. It wants us to have incredible abundance. And it wants the dreams of our heart to manifest. What we have to learn is how to connect with it. So the first place we go is it exists, and I believe in it. Then we realize that we hold reality in place through our beliefs. You know, maybe our bed is in the same place every day because we think it is. And everyone believes that. Another way of saying this is that we all have a comfort zone that makes us feel safe and holds our lives in place. We tend to make about the same amount of money every year unless we see something different and push with it. We stream the same types of movies or shows. We see people who reflect our thoughts. And if you're honest about it, you have the same thoughts and feelings every day at certain times unless there's an interruption in your schedule. When we approach the quantum field, we break out of the sameness and we begin to create life in another way. In everyday life, we believe that objects stay in place. If I put a pen on my desk, it's going to be there when I want to write. And that life moves in a certain way. We get older, we lose our abilities, there's such a thing as entropy and limitation. I don't really believe that. We'll get to that in a minute. For example, can you make objects materialize and dematerialize? Sure you can. Everybody does it all the time. You look for your keys where you put them, and they're not there. So where did they go? You look for them everywhere, you go back to where you first looked for them, and they're there. Okay, that they literally materialized and dematerialized in the astral field. Have you ever looked for $20 in your wallet or your purse and it's not there or a card? You go back and look again and it's there. Everything moves around in the Akashic. It's not so limited with a gravitational pull of the accepted physical reality. Um... If you don't know it, we're in Kali Yuga time when things are heavy and dense. So we're not as aware of how things change. We seem to have a group agreement about ignoring what materializes and dematerializes in ordinary life. You know, everyone says, I looked for it, it wasn't there, but hey, there it is. All right, so we've agreed that we can dematerialize and materialize specific objects. If this is true, why can't we do this with larger parts of life? We can. According to the wolves, it's part of how we must awaken to our higher consciousness and move into group collective consciousness. So this, for me, was one of the most exciting things about being with the wolves. Think about it. You're in a pen with nine or ten wolves They know you. They love you. When you touch them, there's this incredible power that runs through you. You feel them all focusing their energy on you. Looking at what you have as your personal powers and amplifying them. How exciting is that? So, As I spent time with the wolves, I started to notice this interesting and wonderful correspondence. If I was with them and I just even thought for a few moments, gosh, you know, I've just got to have another 50 or $100. There's something I want to do. If I thought, I need a babysitter because my children were small. Or I would just love to have this really incredibly expensive plant for my garden. This is what would happen. Money would come in the mail for no reason. If I wanted to see the wolves, either my husband or a friend would offer to babysit. If I was lonely and I wanted to talk with someone, they would call. If I wanted to read a book or I wanted to plant for the garden, someone would give it to me. Life had never offered me this generosity before. That's the field. 
These events completely changed what I believed to be possible. For example, all of us can change time. When you're running late, you can still arrive on time or everyone else will be late. You can manifest money. You can find lost information or objects and align with this beautiful fabric of the cosmic field. We all know we have this potential within us. It's just about opening to believing, visualizing it, and open our hearts. We're going to talk about getting into that field and how to create with it when we come back. We've been talking about the spiritual journey of crossing the bridge into higher consciousness and working as a collective, and the challenge of connecting and contacting the field. When we come back, we'll do some exercises to put you into the field, and we'll learn more about this. So let's go to break now. times do you find yourself saying it was nothing next time someone tells you great job you'll know how to accept it and not deflect it by listening to courage to be seen radio with host sherry clark sherry clark is an experienced global engineering leader coach and mentor from her experiences one-on-one coaching to corporate consulting and executive coaching sherry has learned many women need at least three things to discover and face success learn about the aces program how to survive male-dominated fields with grace and authenticity, and reach the top without ever once giving up on who you are. Courage to be Seen host Sherry Clark explores the awesome power of your entire self. Check out her website, CourageToBeSeen.com, and listen to the first Tuesday of the month at 11 a.m. Pacific with host Sherry Clark. You have the courage to be seen. See you later. We remember a time when you could simply form a thought and it would manifest. The harmony was forgotten, but it is returning now. The Power of Inspiration and Awakening Radio with Juliet Griffin on TransformationTalkRadio.com each second and fourth Wednesday at 9 a.m. Pacific will take you on adventures through the heart and spirit exploring who we once were. This intuitive healer studied under the guidance of wolves, learning from their wisdom to master a higher frequency for a new state of mind. Visit OneTrueSelf.com. Our angels and animals are always working for and around us. Darcy Pariso knew from an early age she felt this incredible presence that was confirmed for her in a Reiki Level 1 course. From then on, she has honed her skills and dedicated her talents to providing answers, inspiration, and tools for people to move past limiting blocks and past traumas to truly live a life of happiness. For more information about working with Darcy, visit DarcyPariso.com. Sometimes being human has its challenges. Our physical health falters, our spirits sag, our dreams don't immediately come to fruition. Welcome to the power of Maximum Medicine Radio. Join me, Doc Martin, in conversations that will blow your mind about healing. In our hit show, Doc Martin addresses the scientific with bridging to the mystical approaches to give you a new narrative about Maximum Medicine. In this live call-in show, we will journey into the extraordinary genius of the human body and talk about other beliefs that impact being your multidimensional self. We seek the seen and the unseen and explore the earthbound and the otherworldly, all with the purpose of calling forth the maximum you. To learn more about Doc Martin and Maximum Medicine, visit www.SharonMartinMD.com. Hello, everyone. I'm Julia Griffin at OneTrueSelf.com, OneTrueSelf.com, and you're listening to the power of inspiration and awakening on Transformation Talk Radio, where you can experience a higher vibration and a new state of mind. We're talking about the field. It's an energetic place that is constantly sending us unconditional love and light, and 
helps us create a different life that's more in alignment with ourselves. We're going to do an exercise to get in there. And before we go there, it's important for you to know, the more you believe in that field, whether you want to call it God, the universe, or the energy field, the more it believes in you. So let's go ahead and open up our hearts because it's opening to the field that creates the changes. And the place that we have to do that is our heart. Why the heart? Because that's the real language that the animals, the plants, and the earth speak and that energy speaks. And the more that you're in your heart and you're focusing on lasting happiness and creation of desires, the better life goes because the field hears you and responds to you. So let's go ahead and open up our hearts. Let's see a ray of pink light moving into the heart space. Just just draw a big circle on your chest and let that pink light come in. Let it move away tension. Let that unconditional love come in, move away fear or lower vibrations and bring you into alignment with your inner self. Now go ahead and receive more light, and you should feel your shoulders relax, and the muscles in your chest relax, and you should feel how the universe loves you. So let that come in, and think of one thing that your heart really wants. What gives you joy? What's something that you really want more of? And feel that coming in. And let it move into you. It can be something simple or something big, but make sure it resonates with your heart. And that when you have it, it's going to continue to make you happy. If you're asking for money or a material object, such as a home or a car, think about how that would help you to grow as a person. Because we really want that growth associated with it. Now feel the universe coming in. And knowing that that's what you want. And feel that gentle energy making it as though it already exists. And come back. So if you continue to do this, the universe will respond to you. There's always some sort of change in what we're doing or how we live life. And that's part of it. There are places where we don't believe in ourselves or life or the universe. And being willing to make small changes to open to this is one of the important parts. So if you have a small opportunity come to you, for example, if you want a car, you're either going to have to pay for it with a check or some other way, or you're going to have to finance it. So that's something different. You don't do that every day. If you want a garden, you have to dig up the dirt. That's how it goes. So how do these answers or these opportunities come into our field? We don't ask about how or why. And there's a very good reason that we ask about this in our daily lives, and that is because we're in earth consciousness. There's a reason that we do these things and we have to know how to do them. But when you're working with the field, you let it bring in that information to you. A lot of the time, the answers are nonlinear. What you want to do is to love what you want with just a huge, incredible passion. And when you hit a high enough vibration with enough energy, the quantum field will rearrange how you perceive reality. What you think is difficult now, you will find shortcuts for. 
For example, at some point you'll learn that when something is lost, if you imagine yourself holding it or finding it, and you refrain from feeling a lot of kooky vibrations, like I'm never going to find it, oh my God, what am I going to do? If you'll keep yourself out of that, you'll find that the universe will return it to you. But what you're doing is seeing it in your hand, holding it, feeling it, knowing that it's there. That's a different way of thinking and feeling. When the opportunities come, you have to act on your heart and trust the information without doubting it. You have to follow your heart and believe in your intuition. What if you weren't right? We'll rewrite it. You learned you've got to go in the same direction in a different way. So what? It's better than before when you knew nothing. And eventually these actions lead to a higher energy. When there is enough higher energy, life changes in the most amazing way. It's not a miracle. I mean, there are actually real universal rules and laws on how this works. But you've got to get it to work with the small things first. So let me give you an example of when you're tuned into higher energy. There are two ways to take a walk. One is the inner self wants to do it. And you're responding to your inner self. So when you go outside, you see how beautiful the light is. You feel the shadows. You feel the earth underneath your feet. You hear the song of the air. You feel the trees. And you get a great deal of energy. If you're doing it to be in better shape, and that's a good thing, you won't perceive all these other aspects and all these other details. So that's the difference. Am I saying take a walk? just to take a walk, or just because you want to exercise, if you want to, absolutely. But try to notice when it's a cue from the inner self. And this makes a huge difference. If you work with this, and part of this is practice, you'll know what to do and when. Hopefully, you also start to believe that the universe is listening to you, and it cares. Many of us have turned off our connection to the universe because we didn't get what we wanted, which probably means it was out of alignment or it wasn't the right time, or we feel hurt. Well, when those things happen, if we keep working on what we want, connecting with the universe, we'll either understand the reason or we'll create what we wanted in a different way. And this is how we heal. Working with the quantum field actually heals us. So how do these answers and how do these intuitions come into our field? There is a great and beautiful light that's always here, and we tap into it. So let's ask this. How did the wolves manifest change so easily and so quickly? First of all, the older original animals on the planet have never lost their connection with the magical powers that came in with us. And we had those too. The wolves, the deer, whales, dolphins, coyotes, and many other animals are tapped into the rhythm of the planet and the motion of the earth. They don't have to make an effort to connect. They know what's possible and they go there. Because we've done it back in time, we all have the energy to do this. The more you connect through meditation, visualization, and finding your inner self, the more you connect with the field. You can make every experience more harmonious. You can change daily tasks by seeing them as hard or easy. And of course, we all do this every day. You can find the most wonderful flow with the universe if you try. The next step on this planet for those who want to grow spiritually is walking over the bridge of consciousness into greater awakening. And isn't greater awakening finding the part of you that can create a fabulous reality, that can see things in your mind and experience them, that thinks of a friend and they call, who wishes for more abundance 
and it appears. Who wants to heal and be whole? And it happens. So if we do that, we have to realign with the magic. Let's begin by seeing it as a quest and a wonderful fairy tale or a mythological book. See the world as a place where there is prosperity for all, health for all, and a wonderful sense of cooperation along with the joy of living on a planet that responds to your highest and best dreams. And see everything as happening much more quickly and much more in alignment with who you truly are. So we've been talking about practical tips and changes you can make to cross over the bridge into higher consciousness, create a better life, and influence the quantum field in a positive sense. When we come back, we'll look at finding the part of the self that has faith in this process, and we all need more of that. So let's go to break now. It's time to get your life back on Burn Bright Today with Jennifer Marcinelli. Tune in each month on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Learn to move from the darkness of burning out to the light of burning bright. Jennifer is redefining stress and the energetic causes of burnout, shining a light on process to get your life back. For more information about Jennifer and her work, visit BurnBrightToday.com. Are you done being afraid to jump into the life that's waiting for you? Are you ready for a real shift? I invite you to tune in every Tuesday with me, Tracy L, on the Tracy L. Clark Show, where we will teach you how to live your extraordinary life. At 8 a.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio, where I will provide the tools and the steps needed to help you transcend perceived limitations and move forward with an extraordinary life. For more information, visit me at TracyLClark.com. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Talk Radio. Right now, ask yourself, how far are you from your dream? Are you closer today than yesterday? Entrepreneur and personal coach Deborah Rothschild brings the wit and wisdom to transform you into a new dynamic you. Tune in to the Deborah Rothschild Show, Developing a Dynamic You. To learn more about Deborah, visit thedebrashow.com. That's the D-E-B-R-A show.com. Tune in live every Wednesday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Is traditional medicine not working for you? Do you still feel as if your health isn't 100%? Here at the Holistic Medical Center, Dr. Nushin Darvish and the qualified staff look through the dimensions of wellness and start a healing plan prioritized to your needs. Our physicians assess the whole you until complete health is achieved. Get the help you need by visiting drdarvish.com or call 425-451-0404. Hello, everyone. I'm Julia Griffin at OneTrueSelf.com, O-N-E-TrueSelf.com. And you're listening to the power of inspiration and awakening on Transformation Talk Radio, where you can experience a higher vibration and a new state of mind. We're talking about how you influence the higher field of energy to create non-ordinary change, magical changes, and the real meaning and purpose of higher collective consciousness, along with a few tips from the wolves. So we're beginning here with faith, and it's really something that we have to recover on our planet to be able to use higher collective consciousness to make changes here. We all know that when you go to a healer and they touch you, when you're with someone that you love and you feel their love, those are little miracles. 
Those are actually changes in the quantum field that are changing your energy field so that it vibrates at a higher place that's more aligned with you. So we all know how to do that. Probably everyone listening knows how to send love and light in this adapt data. The next piece to this is how do you create what you want in your life so that it appears in a way that it's in alignment with you? Your life feels happier. And you're able to do it for other people and for the planet. That's where we're all going. I guess if I have any one intention for this year, I don't make resolutions. It would be that. So let's talk about the way things were pretty much up into this century or even mid-century. Although life was dense and perhaps people were not so into spirituality, there was magic. There was religion. There were shamanic rituals that taught that life could change in a second. The barren woman could conceive. The person who had been sick their entire lives was well. An aura of love or an aura of higher vibrations was transmitted in a second. People truly believed in mysticism, which is the alignment of consciousness with the higher creator on some level, whatever you want to call it that could bring in incredible changes and miracles. If you've ever experienced a shamanic ritual or an answer to prayer, you know the feeling. It's incredible. It's amazing. You feel like you're more yourself than you've ever been. And yet the part of you that wasn't aligned with that is somewhat removed. You can't feel that anymore. So it's really an amazing thing. You know that life can change in a few seconds. However, we don't have the faith that we once had, and our hearts are not always open to fabulous and complete changes of character and flow of life, and part of this has been science and technology. It's interesting to me to note, and I include myself in this, people are often turned off to change in the places that they want it most. And it's mainly because we don't believe in the power of the universe. So stay with me for a minute. Let's go back to, we're in a mythological tale. We're on a quest. And what happens in those stories? The person is always looking for something. They don't always know what it is. They know what it feels like. They sort of know where they're going. But if you think about it, it's vague until it's in their hand. Well, fairy tales and myth are all about the quest for the soul. What happens? They always follow a path. They're always on a road. They follow clues and magical helpers come in. For me, it was the wolves. For you, maybe it's today with me talking about this and reminding you that wherever you are in the journey, there are helpers waiting for you. There are people that love you, whether you've met them or not. And there is joy and change on your path. I came to believe in miracles by living with Walt and learning that thoughts, emotions, and lives can change in seconds in a very real way so that we begin to feel the joy of the inner self. Because on the highest level, that's really all there is, is the higher self, the connection that we have with other people, with nature, with life, and with the universe. That's where the joy is. The more that I moved into that, the more that I saw what my heart wanted, the more of this energy came in. And here's the interesting thing. When the wolves created things for me, it was without any struggle. It was fairly immediate. And there was the most wonderful, relaxed feeling with it. And I think that's a change we all need is a relaxed feeling with it as opposed to too much work. When you tune into these miracles and as you create them for yourself and other people, you're going to find out there's like a chemical change, a vibrational change. You change when you create them. You'll evolve into a person who can create them not only for yourself, but for other people on the planet. And you're all going there. It's a really interesting part of manifestation. So why did the wolves create this for me? 
Why do I want to teach people how to manifest and create good things? Because it's fun. It's great joy to see fulfillment and growth around you. I mean, you know, of course you can only do it for people who are open to it. And not everyone is, but you know what? You are. So let's activate the part of us that can believe in miracles. Close your eyes. Think back to a time when life responded to you. A wish came true. You were in a beautiful place and it was one of those magical moments when you were connected with everything. Or you just had a fabulous day. But think back to how you were before the change occurred. And a lot of the time you'll find you're waiting for that change. And then it comes. And there's a higher frequency. So let that feeling flow through you once more. Now think about where you want to manifest now. And perhaps you doubt it just a little. And that's either because our heart is hurt or we have something that makes us not completely believe in ourselves or believe that we should be doing that. So let's let love and light wash that away. And come back to that feeling of magic when life responds to you. And if you're honest, you'll find you were connected and in a harmonious place. So let that harmony run through you. And remind yourself that you're a powerful being. And you can create change. And you will create change through higher vibrations and inner alignment. So let's go to the heart space again, that circle in the middle of the chest. Let's feel pink light running through that circle. Pink light is unconditional universal love. Now feel it through every part of you. Feel how it lifts you. And think about your heart. If you ever lost yourself in the circumstances of love, when a relationship ended, when you felt disappointed, when you weren't sure how to go on. Feel love healing that part of your heart and bringing that part of you back to integrate with the rest of you. And feel love in this space. And now say, I believe in myself. I will create the power and strength to change this situation or whatever needs change in my life. Universe, you're perfect. You know the way. Come and help me now. And feel or imagine the universe coming in. And then come back. So let's imagine, for example, if we had just had a million people, which is not even very many, many in the population on Earth, at a higher level, doing that exercise with us, how much more quickly we would all heal. But you're doing your part, and that's a lot. And if you keep asking the universe to help you, it's sort of like this universal rule. If you're in your heart and you're asking the universe to help you and you're consistent with it, the universe must come in. It must help you. So think if we were all asking for this every single day. Think about more people focusing on higher consciousness, seeing a happy, healthy earth and governments that support it. Everyone is happy and well. Marvelous, harmonious vibrations are filling everyone. Feel the peace and joy. We are all connected. The same light from the universe is in everyone, if you can see it psychically. And when we create something from our soul, when we learn how to do it quickly, and perhaps we haven't done that in the past, but when we do that, we're creating a path that other people can follow. 
from our own individual lives. For example, let's just say you double the abundance you receive every week of your life. For other people who want to do that, they can literally follow your vibration like a trio. And at a certain point, if you persist with this, the universe and all the people who are going to higher consciousness move into this place. It's a very exciting and wonderful way to create. So today we're talking about the quantum field, the bridge to higher consciousness, and how to get support and help from the quantum field, the energy that surrounds us and wants everything to work well. You can check out my website at onetrueself.com, onetrueself.com, and sign up for my weekly newsletter if you want to know more. When we come back, I'll share information about collective consciousness and tapping into the vibration of the new earth. Tune in to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Neff. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. The Lucid Planet. Welcome home. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for more information. Are you done being afraid to jump into the life that's waiting for you? Are you ready for a real shift? I invite you to tune in every Tuesday with me, Tracy L, on the Tracy L. Clark Show, where we will teach you how to live your extraordinary life. At 8 a.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio, where I will provide the tools and the steps needed to help you transcend perceived limitations and move forward with an extraordinary life. For more information, visit me at TracyLClark.com. Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? Really? Check us out. Go to TransformationRadio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world one listener at a time. The Knowledge Book, currently studied in 39 countries and 15 languages around the world, accelerates our evolution, takes us out of depression, offers universal truth, protects us, and makes us stronger, both spiritually and physically. So if you are interested in The Knowledge Book, visit usa.thenowledgebook.net and tune in to The Knowledge Book Radio with Marge Potasik on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Coming to you live on TransformationTalkRadio.com is the Brilliance Ultimatum. Time's up with Claudette Rowley. Powerful conversations, practical innovations, and transformative solutions as Claudette and her guests delve into the possibilities and what she calls reality resistance. Join the cultural revolution and annihilate obstacles. Check it out at CulturalBrilliance.com. back on and I'm Julia Griffin at OneTruthSelf.com, OneTruthSelf.com with the power of inspiration and awakening show where you can experience a higher vibration in a new state of mind. We're talking about the new earth, the way that the planet is changing, the way that the energies are changing and the bridge to higher consciousness as well as the quantum field. So stay with us and learn more about this new frontier of consciousness. I know I want to go there. So the bridge of higher consciousness is a place where we join together with others who are in a higher state of mind to create images and feelings from the heart space. And it's about how you want the world to work. For example, I love green things and flowers and a lot of trees. So those are always in my visualizations. And as you create how you want the world to work, you also think about how you want to live, 
how you want to love and be loved, and how you're going to work on your quest. Just thinking about it right now is actually giving you information. You have to go to a higher place to think about it. As many awakened individuals learn to hold proper and clear images all at one time, the world must change. Why? Because light is stronger than darkness. And if many of us are putting out high-frequency thoughts and feelings, the world has to change in response, just like it does in our own world. At any time, when you hold strong, positive images in your heart, the world and the quantum field respond. At this point, many, many individuals who can walk in higher frequency are here at once. So we're experiencing a collective initiation of higher consciousness. It's the revolution of consciousness, the flow of evolution into a higher form. If many people visualize from a higher perspective or a higher feeling at one point and at one time, the planet will change immediately or at least a lot more quickly. So how does this work? Well. There are many advanced souls who reincarnated specifically for this time. You know them because of how their energy feels. They feel good. feels good to be around them. And the depth of their understanding. Each of them has a specific and beautiful vision that was given to them from the universe. For example, I worked in art for a long time and everyone sees colors differently. We all agree that something is blue, but we all see those hues slightly differently, and that's a beautiful thing. When each of us focuses on our individual vision, it radiates out to anyone who can receive it, and in turn, they feel the joy and the beauty of it. So here's a good example of collective consciousness, higher collective consciousness. When Australia, all of it was on fire and being devastated, we all had a choice of looking at pictures of rain or pictures of fire. Fortunately, and I really put this out and I know other people did too, if you focus on the rain and the picture of rain, that's what you're sending. If you think about how bad it is, then that's what you're sending. It's like moving from I'm really sick to I'm getting well. No matter what, I'm feeling better every day. Every day I'm more abundant. And you go there. So you don't need to worry about what is happening in the world. What you want to do is to focus on countering every negative vision, everything you see or hear, with a positive vision. If you hold it tightly enough, you will definitely make that change. Our combined light, our light together, is much stronger than any country or government or plans for the future by politicians. Light is and remains the most powerful force on the planet because love changes everything in a way that people on a lower vibration cannot perceive. It also eradicates fear, which is how most people are manipulated or controlled. If you're truly in your heart or aligned with higher consciousness, You won't feel it, or at least you won't feel it so much. The other part of the equation is faith, and we talked about this earlier in the broadcast. Everyone, including me, is going to have to work and really, really believe in it. It's a big job. But if we work on the small, everyday miracles, certainly we can believe in bigger ones. You arrive in this place of higher consciousness, of working with collective consciousness through intention, putting your will on whatever it is that you want that is better. It's a focus of the mind and the heart. And you learn to read life through the heart and to hear life through the heart. And this is the true language of the earth. Animals, plants, and people, although I don't think that they know it, speak through the heart. And that's where the truth is. At this point, you hear and see things which are often considered imaginary and normal reality, but will turn out to be quite real and factual if you follow them. Many, many feats will be accomplished 
when the energy of the higher collective is complete. It has many names on this planet and is sometimes spoken of in religious terms, but it's a real field of energy between us that is transforming everything. So how does it work? In the past, we've all learned how to center, feel our hearts, project positive feelings, see a better future, and move through a recognized box. You all know how to move into the flow because we did that earlier. We were talking about good things happening in our life. And every time you're there, the field supports you and gently alters the normal flow of events in your life. There are many people who've incarnated this lifetime to experiencing to experience awakening as a group. When a higher frequency is felt for a period of time, everyone in the group feels encouraged, lighter, happier about life. And this is also true with thought, insights, and realizations. When you consciously decide to commit to moving more deeply into your higher consciousness and personal happiness, you're moving more deeply into higher collective consciousness. And all you really have to do is to want it. The whales, the dolphins, the wolves, the higher beings that help everyone on this earth are often sending us hints, imagery, intuitions, so that we can find the right thought or image. We're not alone in this. Nature does the same thing for our evolution. And so the earth is committed to you. The animals are committed to you. Everything is going up in frequency, and this should help us. Walking, sitting outside, meditating outside, these are all very helpful because the natural world can support you. So all of us can see the world is a better place. We can correct the images of what we think is wrong within us, are wrong within the world. And we can make this a habit. You'll know when you're going to do it because you'll feel that left. And you'll believe in yourself more. So let's ask the universe to help us see life in a way that is rich with possibility and opportunity. And let's see ourselves changing our thoughts and feelings and moving into a more abundant and beautiful life. When you do this, you join with all the sentient beings on the earth, including plants, animals, and the new waves and energy of the new frequencies. And it can be spectacular. So here's your tip of the week. Consider the meaning of non-ordinary reality. Think about the fact or the idea that life could move in a very different way. You might look young and live another hundred years. You might learn to create abundance very easily. You may be a healer. You may be a visionary. Find out. See if you can do little things like make time, speed up, or slow down, or feel happier for an hour or two. The universe will supply the insights and give hints for actions. So if you want to know more about this, You can sign up for my weekly newsletter on my website, onetrueself.com, onetrueself.com. I also do private sessions and teach classes. You'll find many tips about the energetic weather, development on a spiritual level, and finding a higher vibration on my website. So I want to thank you for tuning in to the Power of Inspiration and Awakening show, where you can experience a higher vibration in a new state of mind. Please join me on the second and fourth Wednesdays of every month at 12 noon Eastern, 11 Central, and 9 a.m. Pacific. Next week, we'll talk more about the new earth, raising our consciousness, and finding out what we can do to become part of this beautiful change. Thank you for listening to the Power of Inspiration and Awakening Radio with Julia Griffin to master a higher frequency for a new state of mind. Join us next time as Julia takes us deeper into the memory of the moments of light where transcendence and enlightenment emerge. 
The memory of the jewel of consciousness is always lived within you to tap into waves of energy and create huge changes by imagining the beauty of the vision and desires that are hidden in the heart. Learn to find your way back to nature, beauty, and your own heart, which holds the secrets of your existence and future. To discover more about Julia's adventures, animal communication, and the teachings she brings to every show, visit OneTrueSelf.com. That's OneTrueSelf.com. That's O-N-E, TrueSelf.com. 